Hello students, welcome to Legacy AI's Academy. Today we are going to discuss about the global population touching 8 billion mark yesterday and we are also going to discuss that what does this tells us about the future of the world as well as what does it means for India as well as the China. So let us try and understand this topic in more detail. So first of all the news in respect of which we are discussing, discussing today's issue is that human population has touched 8 billion yesterday on the 15th of November and this is a milestone that UN has set heralds both opportunities as well as challenges for different different countries of the world and especially if we talk about India this holds true because India is set to become world's most populous nation after overtaking or surpassing China in the next year that is 2023 and while the United Nations hailed the 8 billion figure as testament to the achievement of humanity it also have sounded a note of caution that what we should be concerned about or what we should also think the different perspective we need to think on this particular issue. So the statement that has been released by the United Nations Population Fund in this regard, they have said that the growth of our population is a testament to humanity's achievement. And this is basically in such situation where not only the population, global population has increased, but we also have made a significant uh, contribution in reduction of the poverty as well as gender inequality across all the world. There has been significant advances that humanity has achieved in the healthcare in last 30 and 40 years or so. And also it has expanded the access to education even to the marginalized section of the society. And it is due to this combined effort of the different countries and United Nations in general that today the median age, uh, we can say the longevity of the people across the world has risen even in the developing countries and the least developed countries due to advancement in healthcare. Now people have much better access to the health facilities, hospitals and other infrastructure facilities and due to expanded access to education. Now basically the youth population of the world has a decent chance and good chance to have a life for themselves which they desire. And at the same time, there has been another statement released by UN Under Secretary General for the Economic and Social Affairs. And he has said that as far as the rapid population growth is concerned, though it has a lot of positive connotations, but at the same time, it makes eradicating poverty or combating of hunger and malnutrition and increasing the coverage of health and education system much more difficult. So though we have a region to celebrate, we also have to be cautious about how we are able to transfer all these basic amenities to the people who really need it. Let us now try to understand about how the major trend in the global population rise is being observed. So as far as UN Population Fund is concerned, if we talk about this particular year, 2022, the global population rise has reached its slowest rate since 1950 and currently it is slightly below 1%. At the same time, it, if uh, the global population uh, keep on rising at same rate or relatively lesser rate, it could grow to around 8.5 billion by the year 2030 and almost 9.7 billion by the middle of the century that is in 2050. And if we forecast then we can also say that the global population is projected to reach a peak of around 10.4 billion people by the year 2080s and after that it is expected that will remain at that level until the end of century that is 2100 due to the significant population growth rate that has been declining in the major countries including India as well as obviously China. Now what we have to understand that as far as the population growth is concerned in the later part of the century, it is believed that 8 of the countries of the world are going to contribute most or we can say 50% of global population rise will be contributed by these 8 countries alone. So these 8 countries are India, then we have Ethiopia, that is African country, we have Nigeria, another African country, then we have Democratic Republic of Congo, we have Pakistan, Egypt, Nigeria, Tanzania and the Philippines. So these are the eight countries that will contribute maximum as far as the population growth in the by the year 2050 or 2100 is concerned. And it is believed also that 46 least developed countries which are also among the world's fastest growing and the countries and several other countries are projected to double in population between 2022 to 2050. So what about India's position as far as this population rise is concerned? So as per the UN Population Fund report, it is projected to overtake China as we discussed before as the world's most populous country in the next year. 
and currently if you look at the data india's population stand at a figure of 1.412 billion and the population of china is just slightly uh, higher at 1.426 billion and if we look at this projected rate in mind we can see that by year 2050 india's population is expected to reach 1.668 billion while China's population will be mere 1.317 billion. So we will be far, far ahead from China as far as the population is concerned. Now this also heralds an opportunity for India because there is a, at this point, we have a very good chance to reap our demographic dividend. And this has been made clear by UN Population Fund because if you look at the median age of the countries, the median age of the country, if you talk about compare India, China and Japan, India has a median age of around 28.7 years only. On the other hand, China has a median age somewhere in the range of 35 to 40 years, while the Japan has a median age of 48.6 years. That is almost double uh, of the India's median age. Similarly, if you look at the major European countries, the developed countries, the Western Europe as well as USA, we can see the median age of the population of these countries are uh, ahead or we can say higher than the India. And that is why India is best suitable, uh, India is at best suitable place to reap its demographic dividend. So obviously the question comes, what is the demographic dividend? So as for the as for the UN definition, it simply can be defined as the economic growth potential of any country that can result from shifts in the population age structure. That means how the age structure of the population is changing, which part of the age uh, has highest population share in the country's population. And this becomes more pronounced mainly when the share of the working age population which is considered to be somewhere between 15 years to 64 years is larger than the non-working age of the population that means between 0 to 14 and above 64. So when the number of people in the age group of 15 to 64 years are much more higher as compared to the dependent age groups that is what we can call as demographic dividend and a country can reap the benefit by providing them equal by providing them better employment opportunities and skilling opportunities for them. Now if we talk about India obviously we can see that 68% of India's population is in the age group of 15 to 64 years that is the age group which is considered as a working age population by United Nations. And only 7% of its population is above 65 years of age, which are dependent directly or indirectly on this working age population. Not only that, even within the age group of 15 to 64 years, if we talk about the youth population, that is in the range of 15 to 29 years, it makes up more than 27% of the country's population. And uh, if you talk about in the, in the sense of sheer numbers, at 253 million, India is considered to be the home to world's largest adolescent population in the age group of 10 to 19 years. Now, this is also significant because the population, uh, if you, can, you can talk about the number of people, if they are very, very large or higher in the age group of 10 to 19 years, in the coming decade, they will be actually joining the workforce. And that is why also for quite some period of time, at least next 15, 20 years, India will have this opportunity to reap its demographic dividend. However, at the same time, UNFPA also has given some other uh, analysis as far as India's population is concerned. First of all, it says that India is enjoying currently the largest ever adolescent and youth population. And that is why India currently is experiencing something that is referred as a demographic window of opportunity. And as per UNFPA is concerned, the youth bulge of India, this the larger share of the population, uh, larger share of youth in the population of India will last at least until 2025. And that is why this is a very crucial juncture, crucial junction as far as the population composition is concerned. Now, obviously, the question comes to mind that if these are the major facts that we have discussed in context of India, the most uh, important competitor of India, what about China? So as far as China's population structure is concerned, China is currently suffering or facing a severe problem of severe aging. And this we can understand from this particular fact that it is expected that by year 2035, almost 400 million people of China will be in the age group of greater than 60 years. And due to this, China's elderly population is continuously or is expected to keep on rising. And by year 2021, we have 267 million people in China that makes up almost 18.9%, roughly we can say 19% of Chinese population are made up of elder person, elderly person. And this number is expected to rise by 300 million by year 2025. And thus, 
if we look at the population growth also china has china is facing some problem here we can see the birth rate in china has been continuously falling and it has fell for the fifth consecutive year in last year and this is basically attributed to the china's uh, one child policy that it has adopted and actually put into practice stringently for last couple of decades so due to this china is currently suffering the problem of severe aging and increase in the median age of its population not only that, UNFPA also have said that on the one hand, China is rapidly aging, as we just have discussed. On the other hand, its population is also in decline due to the falling birth rate. So China is suffering uh, something that we can call as double whammy, increase in the age of the population as well as decline in the birth rate. And this is something that has raised concern among the Chinese government and over the future availability of the labor force. Because if you try to understand the economic model of China, for a very long period of time, China has been reaping its demographic dividend using its population to produce a very cheap quality of a cheap supply of labor. And that is why many manufacturing industries from all across the world have preferred China as their destination. But as you can understand that as the median age has started to rise, as the number of people in the working age population has started to decline, then obviously the competitiveness of China will start to decrease. And the competitiveness of China start to decrease, in that case, India, as well as the other South Asian countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, these countries will have a very good window of opportunity to provide a competitive environment for the industries, manufacturing industries, service industries from all across the world to sit there. And that can also give rise to the employment opportunities for the youth population of these South Asian nations. So we can say whatever, what can be considered as a curse for China can be a very well boon for the South Asian countries, including India. So Obviously, to tackle this problem and challenges that Chinese government is facing, the Chinese government recently has allowed couples to have three children. So we can see this is a kind of a very big shift in the approach of Chinese government that we are observing, where earlier it was uh, the people, uh, the couples of China were restricted to having only one child. Now even they are allowed to have three children. And not only that, even government has announced incentive for the people to have more children. However, despite all these development that is happening, the world's population touching 8 billion figure, the, uh, India is expected to become the most populous nation by year 2023, that is the next year. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, he also made some caution points that we have to keep into consideration. So first thing he has said that though the population is rising, there is also what we are seeing is a yawning chasm that has developed across the world between global haves and global have not. That means the whole world has been divided into two classes. One class is that is rich classes and one class is that is poor classes. Now this is something that is not only applicable on individual basis. This is something we also see on the uh, on the country wide manner where we have a very uh, developed countries having a large per capita income and on the other hand we have the less developed countries or developing countries having uh, problems of poverty malnutrition uh, less education healthcare uh, problems as well as low per capita income and this is something that also we have seen in the recent statement that was released by the foreign minister of india mr s jayashankar when he was in visit to russia that the whole global south is facing the problem due to the Russian war and Global South is basically a collective term that has been used to refer to the least developed and developing countries across the world. So also Mr. Guterres has said that 8 billion strong world we have today but this world is filled with tensions, mistrust, crisis and conflict. So that is something that also we have to ensure that this kind of situation can be diffused going forward. Also, people in the richest country can expect to live up to 30 years longer than those in the poorest. So not only there is a wide deficit, wide gap between the economic resources, economic power, there is also wide resources, wide gap we see in the longevity where the richest uh, pe uh, people in the richest country can live more than 30 years as compared to the poorest countries. And that is why inequalities have grown to that need to be addressed. And currently we can understand that this also has been a point made in the famous book of Thomas Piketty where he said that the 1%, top 1% of global population have control over more than 50% of its resources. So I hope you understood about this particular issue that what are the significance or what are the major key takeaways that we can take from the recent uh, increase in the global population by uh, global po population to the 8 billion figure. So if you like this particular video, please hit the like button, share it with your fellow aspirants and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. Thank you very much.